And welcome back to the Messy Church Podcast. This is episode six. I'm here with Pastor Norm and uh, Pastor Jeff Gray back with us this week. And first off, uh, if you've been listening to this over the past, uh, you know, several weeks that we've been going through the Messy Church series, if this has been encouraging for you, if this has equipped you, I just want to encourage you, please share this podcast. Uh, I think this is a great resource for our church, but also for anyone else um, walking the walk, um, following Jesus. And so, um, but we're into some great stuff today. We're almost done with the Messy Church podcast. Uh, This is episode six, and I believe there's only eight total episodes that we're going to be doing. So the end is around the corner already. Can't believe we're already here, but um, where we're at in Messy Church um, so far, I'm going to hand the steering wheel over to Pastor Norm. Pastor Norm, you're going to be leading our discussion more so than I am this week. So I'm going to go ahead and hand the baton over to you. Okay. Well, thank you. And glad to have Jeff with us today. And, uh, we, uh, it's always a challenge to do these things. It's new to us, but you know, I I don't mind jumping in and just, you know, that's the thing we do, right? I I kind of feel like if you're not messing up, you're not trying, right? That's right. There you go. And so, uh, (laughs) that's what we're doing. So, uh, we are in Romans nine through 11 this week and many theologians, uh, um, they kind of call this, I don't know if they would call it anything, but they may call it the sovereign grace Hmm. passages or something like that. But, uh, you know, I looked this up and, you know, the word sovereign grace is not in the Bible as a package like that. So, (laughs) but neither is Trinity, you know, so there are teachings and that neither is the word rapture in that sense, but there are the teachings are there. But, um, so it's, it's not in the Bible, it's, it's, uh, it's all through there. We see God choosing people to do things, to be things, to be in the right place, right time, and all that. We see Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. Uh, he was not, he, the, his people were not worshiping God as we know, and uh, yet God pulled him out of there because God had a plan to save and redeem the world, so he did that. We see that uh, as he chose him to be a blessing to the nations, uh, his ancestry and, and all that. Uh, we see with Jacob, he God picked him over Esau. He Esau, the firstborn, mm-hmm. would have been the one with the birthright and all these to be. He would have been the one to father many nations, but God chose Jacob, and he chose him before he was born for a reason, to show us that he picked him, selected him mm-hmm. uh, over him without, any, without him doing anything to earn that. Mm-hmm. And so we see God's grace throughout the Bible, uh, David over Saul. Saul was Saul looked kingly, you know, and God right. said, "Nah, I got I got somebody. I got somebody that a man that's a man after on God's own heart." And which we know what David did. One of my one of my favorite parts about that is the people chose Saul. Correct. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, we have that. And then we see you know God, Jesus picks the twelve disciples, and what was the problem with those guys? I mean, uh, <laughs> one of them he knew what he was going to do. Right, he knew he was going to be. He's going to turn. Uh, so, uh, and then, and then you, you. There's no way you can say that 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 God doesn't pick Saul, who turns to be Paul, hmm. to reach the Gentiles, because um, he stops them and blinds them on a the road. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so we see it all throughout Scripture, and then and and then if you want to look ahead, something we haven't seen yet, but it's in Scripture, is that after the rapture and. We don't have time to get into all of that, but after the rapture, see, all the Christians are taken up, right? And those that didn't believe, which is going to be a lot of Jews Mm -hmm. that didn't believe, well, God's going to pick 144,000 of them to go out and reach the world with the gospel. So uh, it's all in there. So we cannot deny that God has everything to do with our salvation from beginning to end. Uh, He wooed us. He pursued us, and best of all, he keeps us, which is some of the teaching we've got in Romans, right? He he justifies, he cleanses, and he glorifies us in the end. Uh, and we know this, again, and more that's in uh, Romans. God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, um, you know, and, you know, what does man bring to the table? Mm. You know, I mean, we're sinners. 
And again, that's in Romans, right? We're not righteous, no, not one. And it tells us in that, in Romans, particularly Romans 3, 10 and following, that there's none that even seeks after God. I mean, we are in a hopeless condition uh, so that God saves one person. That's a miracle. Well, it's an act of God's grace, mm. right? And so, and we see that man's responsibility in all of this is to believe, is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the scriptures tell us in Romans, you will be saved. Uh, so obedience will follow for those who truly surrender uh, to Jesus in love. So back to Romans, back to Romans 9 through 11. Because I got to tell y'all, I don't believe the, the scriptures are that hard. Mm -hmm. I do believe man, men make it complicated. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we've talked about this before about reading the scriptures slow, reading it uh, in context, uh, exegesis versus eisegesis. Mm -hmm. uh, eisegesis is when you try to make it say something it doesn't say mm -hmm. and take it out of context. So, but back to Romans 9 through 11. And I, I, this morning, I'm going to, I'm going to, kind of pepper you guys with some questions. Gunner's done a great job leading this and all that. I, I want to <laughs> take that opportunity. But but back to Romans 9 through 11. And, it, and the thing about Romans 9 through 11, it follows Romans 1 through 8. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So, and in context, we've heard Paul dealing with the church at Rome. We've talked about in the series how that was messy, right? He's not been to this church. It's 25 years after he's had ministry experience, and, and it's 25 years of them having their own church experience, okay? Uh, we can sense some drama, mm -hmm. uh, and we can sense some tension between the Jewish and Gentile believers there. It, it's messy. Mm. That's why we're talking about it. The Gentiles, they seem more prone to uh, confessing Jesus as Lord, um, and 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 the Jews are struggling, uh, and 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 you can tell it. I mean, hence the reason that one hundred times in about fifty verses, Paul references the law. Mm -hmm. Again, as us sitting here in twenty twenty four talking about the law in church, we're like, uh, I know, I know your average church members like or attenders, like, well, why are we talking about the law? And then, mm -hmm. and when I say that Paul references it 100 times in 50 verses, you say the same word in there, there there's something there's some, uh, there there. Um, but in Romans 9, Paul's desire to see all of Israel saved, it's in there. I mean, he, he could see them. He could see them slipping away as they were reticent to surrender to Christ. And in Romans chapter 10, Paul Paul urged them, and we use this Romans 10 a lot. If you've used the Romans road mm -hmm. and somebody says, I'm ready to be saved, well, confess Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and, you know, and believe in your heart. Mm -hmm. And scripture says you will be saved. And, and, and that really, in context, that's Paul telling the Jews, you guys need to surrender mm -hmm. to Christ. And, you know, and of course we do too, but they, they needed to do that. In Romans 11, uh, we see Israel's failure open the gate wide open for the Gentiles. I mean, today, really, the church is largely Gentile populated. Um, and, he, and he see the, the bad thing for the Jews is a good thing for the, the Gentiles as they come in. And we see, but then we still see in, in Romans 11, that Paul says that all hope is not lost for Israel because there's a day coming when all Israel will be saved as you finish through that chapter. So I, I want to get out of you guys mm. as we've set that table with that. I mean, make it personal. Tell tell how God wooed and pursued you. Well, for, I think for me, um, <clears throat> I think God pursued me through the salvation of my father. Um, I was a little boy and wasn't involved in church. Um, church wasn't a part of our lives. And um, Praise God that there was a man that made the decision to engage my father in a spiritual conversation. Amen. And my father gave his life to Jesus Christ. And shortly after him doing so, um, my whole family knew there was a change. And it took a little time of watching and making sure it wasn't, you know, early I thought it was probably maybe medication or something that my dad was mm -hmm. all of a sudden being good to us or mm -hmm. something happened I knew. But it took some time of watching him um, 
He was a changed man. Mm. And I think that's how Jesus Jesus drew me him to himself through the modeling of my of my father. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. For me, um, as I've as I've shared, I don't know, maybe an episode or two ago, my mom led me to the Lord. Um, but that you, you say that wooing sense, I I know that that happened in the, at that in that VBS. All right. Right. And um, it was like a tug. It was like something deep in my gut that I knew. Um, was was happening and um and it was in response to i think truth even though it was being sung in a unique way for kids to understand it and taught in a way for me to understand it it was the in that song admit that i'm a sinner like i'm not perfect Mm -hmm. i make mistakes knowing that um because of that we need a savior and believe that jesus was who he says he was Mm -hmm. that he is the son of God, he died and he rose again, and then to confess him as Lord of my life. And it was just really unique in that in that song. And so it just in that, and I love how that God used in a time of worship to woo me. Mm-hmm. Um, but bef- mm-hmm. years before I ever thought I was going to be called in the ministry to lead, to, to be a worship leader. And, um, and so I just like really just as a third grader, just right. broken in that, just, just didn't really know how to handle that. Why am I emotional? This wasn't even a slow song. I don't think either. So this wasn't mm-hmm. like the, the song that really is trying to, you know, grab the box of tissues, but mm-hmm. even still, um, mm-hmm. and then from that, from that feeling, from that, from that experience, so to speak, um, I asked my mom about it and then we got to talking and she, she, you know, shared with me what, you know, God's word shared, shared with me what, what that, what that probably was, mm. told me about the Holy Spirit. Wow. And, um, and then, you know, led a pray led me to pray. So it was really neat. She didn't actually say words that I repeated. Mm-hmm. She just said, Gunnar, you need to pray mm-hmm. and, and make God, you know, make him, make Jesus Lord of your life. And so that was the first time I think I ever like prayed sincerely that prayer, um, or any like, legit prayer right. so to right. speak and that was in a bunk bed in a mm-hmm. in a trailer so wow um, so yeah so we see the Romans 1 power of the gospel in both of you yeah. through other people being being shared we see the church having vacation bible school That's right. we see mm-hmm. worship being a part of that you mm-hmm. see somebody sharing the gospel your dad mm-hmm. and getting it to you i mean you know we see the power of the gospel move unseen it's it we can't we see it, but we can't see it, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's that power. Uh, so how did you, how did you know you were saved? So the gospel came to you. How did you know? I know I'm saved because I think there's people watching. Are like, I know you. I know we all talk to people. They're like, I don't know. I mean, I. How do you know? For me, at that age, it was conviction mm-hmm. on things and decisions I made after that moment. Mm-hmm. It was like a new sense of like that same like gut feeling I got. On the, in that wooing mm-hmm. was whenever I knew I, I lied mm-hmm. about doing uh, something. Okay, it was a it was a I got chills and I got I, I, I well, like I got sick to my actual stomach. Like I was ready mm-hmm. to throw up whenever I knew I was doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's okay. and it was weird. Like why why in those moments was that like my form of affirmation? <laughs> like why did that have to be? Why couldn't it be you know sunshine and rainbows and make me feel good? I didn't feel good. I actually felt sick. So mm-hmm. that was. You know, for me at that age, before you know, uh, before I became a teenager, that was obviously had it all figured out, mm-hmm. and you know, <laughs> right. knew what they were doing. Yeah. Um, that was the first way I knew, and and my mom, t- you know, she taught me that. She was like, mm-hmm. "Look, like, do you feel sick? Because mm-hmm. when you try to hide stuff from us, when you lie, when you do things, the Holy Spirit is going to convict you, and that's what right. you're feeling. That's what you're experiencing. You know." What you're doing is wrong, and that so that was for me at, at that. I guess at that age, mm-hmm. that was a way of evidence okay. for me. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the process of sanctification of my life, right? And <clears throat> being a new believer, I didn't know much. Like, mm-hmm. I, I didn't really know anything about the story of Jesus other than the gospel, mm-hmm. right? So, right. for my conviction of sin, it came, of course, through the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know everything. Mm-hmm. I didn't know right from wrong in some cases, what was right, what was wrong, except by the Holy Spirit, right? So, I think like in the process for me as I grew in my knowledge of him and obedience, he revealed more to me mm-hmm. to obey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And so um, I think that I think you've talked about it more than once about sanctification and that process and how it's not just like you are walking one day and you meet Jesus mm-hmm. and you receive him. And all of a sudden your life changes 100 percent right on the spot and you mm-hmm. never sin again. 
Mm-hmm. Right? So you meet Jesus, and then from that point, you begin the process of sanctification. Right. And it's not a straight shot like an arrow either, right? right. It's up and down and back and forth. It's a battle. Mm. It's a battle with your flesh, mm-hmm. right? Even as a child, you battle with flesh, right? You battle to tell the truth, like <laughs> you said, and being nice to your brother, those kind of things. I mean, there's a lot to it as a kid, right, yeah. mm-hmm. as you grow in your faith. So. That's right. So we see it's an inside job. It is an inside it job. It is the Holy Spirit doing that sanctification, that cleaning process. It's not clean, not pretty. Uh, and it takes us back to Romans 2. Romans In Romans chapter 7, where Paul talked about that struggle. And so I think it's good for everyone to know that it's okay to talk about it. We, it is a struggle. It's a battle. It's various times. Mm-hmm. There's, de- there's times in our lives I think we all would say, man, I was whoosh, sailing on that path. And, and I don't know how even how you can go sailing on that path to every now and then just get something thrown in front of you where you, you know, I mean, um, I don't know. I, I know I've had that in my life where, and I thought, I thought, okay, we're done. That's, yeah. You know, and then. Um, and I know I've even, obviously as a, even a young adult kind of out of, out of high school, there were moments where seasons of life, um, we experienced them. And I mean, I'll be, I'll be completely honest and transparent like I, there were moments where I was driving I do a lot of thinking I do a lot of meditating while I'm driving I know some people hate to drive I love driving um and um I there's like the little personal conversation that I had with the Lord and I genuinely doubted my faith a little bit and I think I've I've you know I've, I've been through more than one of those seasons mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um where um you know I was more so begging for it, evidence like mm-hmm. crying out, like I need evidence, um, you know, to 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 prove to me again something you've already done, yeah. um, you know, and um, you know, and I, I don't I don't know if you remember Norm. We met at Santino's. This was actually in a really kind of a dark time of my life where I had actually resigned from a kind of position in ministry, and I was at I was at the point where I was like I was ready to quit. And um, do you remember this? Do you remember this meeting? Keep going. I remember. Um, I remember a couple of meetings. And so, yeah. um, you and you and Jeff Cranford met me at Santino's, and it was like out of the blue kind of thing too. It's like mm. I, we were Rachel and I weren't we weren't even attending church here, and uh, we weren't married yet. We were engaged. Yeah. And, okay. Um, yeah, I remember that. You remember this now? And so, um, I was I was ready to throw in the towel mm. for ministry, and uh, just didn't think I was cut out for it, and you know. Um, but uh, so I tell people all the time, like that. So that meeting alone meant a lot to me um, because it was, you know, in that meeting, you, you know, I didn't really, I don't think really, we really even knew each other a whole lot. We obviously had connections through, you know, through your kids, and then I know like even my grandparents like taught your kids in schools, like Pine Terrace. Like I know there was history there, but it was just like I didn't realize how much I needed someone to to verbally actually in person tell me like, you know. Um, I care about you, like, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so I, jokingly, I tell a lot of people all the time, like my youth pastor growing up was the reason why I um, was called to ministry. And Norm, you're still the reason why I'm in it. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, so, but, um, but yeah. Well, you know, that's a good, that's a good reminder for us to listen to that little voice in us that says, mm-hmm. call somebody or text somebody mm-hmm. or do something. Yep. Cause I think if I do remember, I've probably, told you i don't know this i feel like god said let's get together you know mm-hmm. and so it's good to be obedient to that mm. um he can he can use anybody yep. yeah amen that's good <clears throat> stuff man um you know that that is god working from on high and and using us um man that's that's don't miss the importance mm-hmm. of that when he's speaking to you about somebody even if he's just putting their name on mm-hmm. your mind yeah. or on your heart um got a question from our from that uh from the scriptures where paul's talking he says uh he's talking to the jews and he says christ is the end of the law for righteousness to all who believe and i just want to ask y'all what what does that mean christ is the end of the law for righteousness to all who believe and i mean one of you can answer both of you got thought when i when i hear you say that <clears throat> really actually it's quite a relief for me to hear that passage because <clears throat> I think so many people strive to earn their salvation. Mm. So every religion except except 
Christianity, they strive for their salvation. Mm -hmm. They have to work. You know, mm -hmm. Islam, you got to have to follow the five pillars. Right. And if you don't follow the five pillars, then you can't possibly in inherit a, par a, tr a paradise. Mm -hmm. Right. So for me, that's just amazing news that it's not about me. It's about mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. He does the work. And right. I get the freedom because of the work and to get to enjoy him forever because of that work. Right. So uh, I'm really grateful for that in my life because I know who I am. And if it was based on my works, like I don't want, I don't want that for me. Mm -hmm. Like I know who I am and I know what I was. Right. And if it's about that, then I'm in trouble. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Can we, I would, I would say kind of to help answer that um, and to maybe y'all can help teach this but for some for some of our folks who hear hear us and we read it in scripture when we say the law mm -hmm. can we unpack that um i think there's a lot of folks even i think even myself who grew up in church my whole life got even to the point where i was in my early 20s and would hear you know you know would, would drop in on a message and you know was the law the law and you know was kind of thrown out there and it's just like okay like all right stop just saying that right over and it's going over my head right, every time right. can we so what is you know, just to address that, the law, what do we, what is Paul referring to as the law? And, you know, that's Old Testament. Um, well, this was that law that the Jews thought that they had to live up to, to uh, be children of God, mm -hmm. under his chosen people. But the fact about that law was they couldn't live up to it. Right. And they somehow had in their head that they did live up to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they kind of completely missed it. Mm -hmm. um, they were to try. They were to try to live to that and obey that, um, uh, whether it be the, the Ten Commandments and then the additional laws that God had given them, and then the extra ones that they gave themselves. Right. Uh, that really the ten were to show you you can't do it, and you need God, and so you need to repent and mm -hmm. follow Him, and and all that. And, and so the message is. To let them know is Christ has fulfilled it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is a great relief is what you're saying. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to ask about, um, or say something about, you know, the beginning of, of uh, Romans 9, looking at the Jewish people. I think, too, <clears throat> maybe helps clarify that a little bit, is in this passage there's like two different types of Jews in the passage, right? There's the ethnic mm -hmm. Jews that live under the law. And then there's the ones that have become the body of Christ in the right. church in Rome that are no longer living in the law of inner grace, mm -hmm. right? right? So this group in the beginning he's talking to is an ethnic group, and that's why there's so much like some negativity in chapter 9 about that group because they've not come under Jesus Christ. They are right. hanging on to the law, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. which is going to be um, fruitless. Right. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like trying to be the one foot in, one foot out you were talking about yeah. There, uh, recently. Yeah, and, yeah. It, you know, you also like— I look at, I, I, I see that and I, I'm thinking like, all right, there, there's belief systems now that people aren't agreeing on. And we see that today. Mm -hmm. Like that's obviously some like, as some theological stances now that people don't see or like are having a hard time either understanding and they don't agree. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think we're, I think in a lot of, in light of messy church, I think that's something that we can address. Um, you know, we don't agree on everything, you know. Um, yep. And when it comes to theology, and 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 which is <clears throat> theology is the study of God's word, you know. Um, but but yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, to answer your question, yeah, Christ fulfilled, you know, the law, like the 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 bar set for righteousness that was set by the law, Christ fulfilled. He was the only one to fulfill. Um, and Amen. Right. He did what right. we could not do. Right. And. Yep. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. No. Yep. yep. And the response, and then that brings into the proper response is to go to Him, follow Him. Uh, that's all we can do. And and not even just the fact that He did what we couldn't do, but then He declares <clears throat> us in the standing. So, for example, there's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of you you see it in, in some Catholicism, but you know you see this idea of like obtaining sainthood. Mm. And Paul writes about sainthood in Ephesians, and basically the gospel says, like, you you obtain sainthood not because of what you did, but what Christ did for you. And so, like, we couldn't do it, and then we get the the gift of now we're declared it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, right. so that's right. that's kind of a kind of a double kind of a well, double cross punch. You, there, you bring that you bring that in. Uh, so that's interesting because we don't 
I, we rarely address this is uh, we've talked about how in the Bible we're called Christians four or five times, right. and of course that's what we normally call believers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've learned through our discipleship, uh, you know, over 260 times we're called disciples. So we're called disciples more than anything else. But the second on that list is we're called saints, mm -hmm. and we're never the word we're and we're never called saint. Right. You you look that word mm -hmm. up. And the only time saint is used is every saint. So he's still using it plural. Right. But the rest of the time, it's saints most of the time. So we are called saints a lot because he expects us to live that mm -hmm. sanctified life. Um, so mm. do we? Do you have something else? Here? No, that's okay. good. Yeah. Um, but uh, frequently, Paul addresses questions that he knows particularly Jews are asking. In, in this passage, not too late, he'll say, "Was this?" You know, he'll, mm -hmm. he'll ask some questions. So, what? What? I, I just want to ask y'all: What makes man think he can question God? Because that's what most of those questions are. What makes man think he can question God? <clears throat> I think that one word, pride. Yeah. We put ourselves at a somehow we put ourselves at the same playing level as God is. We're, we're 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 equals mm -hmm. in our own eyes mm -hmm. to him mm -hmm. that we can challenge and question his authority and his sovereignty. I, th I think, and then I think you answered it right. I mean, that's and that's where we need to back off when we yeah. uh, when some of these things we don't understand and we try to question God about what about those people way over there or what about this, you know, this this whole thing about worrying about whether God saved this person, saved this person, or that person is uh, it's just a amazing that he saved anybody right mm -hmm. because the scriptures tell us nobody's looking for him and so uh mm -hmm. that was uh that was a little bit uh, that's a good to just uh check ourselves uh we're not god mm -hmm. uh, and the fact is we know that god cares about us more than we care about ourselves and i've said this many times just look at the stuff that we eat you mm -hmm. know uh so uh what problem what problems were common with Jew, the jew and gentile in the same church Okay, were and were they supposed to be the same church? Mm. Should they just go ahead and have a Gentile church and go ahead and have a Jewish church? Well, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't think so. Uh, so, um, but yeah, it, I mean, obviously, it was it was a problem back then, um, you know. But Paul, again, being a Jew, to be the great gospel communicator to Gentiles, you know. Um, there's there's no issue of them worshiping under the same same roof um but we going well i'm just going to say like that's that. very complicated right having the same two different belief systems coming in their same roof even like living overseas and having churches there where you've got hindus coming to faith from their idolatry idolatrous worship right and mm. temples and then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then you have muslims enter the room and they've come to faith with their background of right pursuing Allah, right. and then you've got the Roman Catholics and all under the same roof, mm -hmm. it's it's really challenging, mm -hmm. right? Because no matter what you say, it impacts their former belief system. Mm -hmm. And so being able to clean that up for three different religious groups is really challenging right. under one roof, right? Mm -hmm. But it's amazing what the Holy Spirit does right. under that same roof of people Amen. because he yeah. works on all of their lives based on no matter where they came from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? There's scriptures true right. for all people, right? And right, so helping them, maybe sometimes it's the challenges, if in, in Paul's challenges is helping them come under the, uh, under the, uh, the, the scripture as far as um, the teachings of Jesus mm -hmm. and letting go of who they were yeah. to receive what he has for them. Right. You know, right. one of, one of the problems I see you know, be, if I were to if I were to jump in a time machine and jump back in there, I would see the you know we talk about pride. We would, uh, the 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 self righteous attitude of the Jews who've historically kind of had this law that they followed for years. You know, and um, there's this you know again there's this path or this we talked about like this exercise for righteousness given by the law that obviously they, they never met. Um, but these Gentiles didn't have that, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so here they are, you know, with no history of they're the law. They're, they're the they're, dogs, man. They're you know dogs. what I mean? Yeah. And so I can see like, okay, I know why I'm in this room, but I don't understand why they're here. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, and then, but how many times do we see that like happen in our own worship centers, our own sanctuaries, our own houses of worship mm. where we can't even, we can't even worship because 
we're too caught up about like I know why I'm here, but I don't understand why they're in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's a messy that's right. that's a messy stuff. And um, mm-hmm. you know, I think we could I could go on that. That's that's a little more area that I'm a little more passionate about than some others. So, but um, well, you know, too, I was thinking of Gunnar. I was thinking about that and. You think about the difference between having the Jewish and the Gentiles together in church, right? So you think about how the, the Jewish obviously they believers, had an aisle, right? And so uh, <laughs> yeah, they probably separated a little bit, right? But I'm just thinking about like how the, the Jewish population was really driven toward law and rules and regulations, mm, right. mm-hmm. legalism, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And then you think about like writing to the church in Corinth and how <clears throat> Paul says, "Listen, you don't drink the Lord's Supper wine like you're right when you're thirsty." Kids are right. crazy, right? Over there. And so he's right. talking to a Gentile church, right? right? So right. the Gentiles are far on the other side of liberalism, right? Right, right? and just everything's free and mm-hmm. trying to draw them all into, all into one place, man. That's yeah, a right. challenge, man. So he's, that's messy church. That's, yeah. that's it, man. That's that's why I mean that's I think that's how we got here and and we see that. Uh, you know, we see like we talk about a lot of times that, uh, you know, in, in, in our world today, more so probably around here is is beaten. It's this denominations coming together. I got somebody got saved here, there, grew up in that mm-hmm. environment. They got saved there. I mean, right. And then yet there's a lot of things not being done biblical at the church. That's why we want people to just read the Bible. And people have come to mm-hmm. us sometimes and say, well, why don't we do this? Well, I say, show me where it's in the Bible. You know, it's right. it's not. Mm-hmm. And, and so we got these traditions, rituals and relics and stuff going on. And. This is why we say some people need the church beat out of them. Not what's in the Bible church, but right. what we've mm-hmm. been taught or, or learned. And and right. uh, so I, I want to take that and to that, that get us to this, I mean, maybe this will end it for us. Is how, so how, how could we, because we do see this at Paul. Paul is concerned. Mm-hmm. Or he's for the people. How could we be more concerned about our people coming to faith in Christ as Paul was? And, I mean, what should we do or or do differently. Hmm. Well, I'm just thinking about a D group meeting I had this week. Um, we're on the, I think lesson five and it looks at the fact that 751 people die every day in Florida. Mm-hmm. That number's changed in 2020 from 2022 to 2023. Now the number is 777. Mm-hmm. So 777 people die each day in Florida. It's been eternity either heaven or hell, right? Mm-hmm. And so the question came up in D group is um, on that on that particular page, there's the number 751 is written 13 times. Mm-hmm. And my request of each member of the group was write a lost person's name beside that number 751. Mm. Go through your contact list, look at your family, and then start writing names down on that page of people that you know don't know Jesus. Mm, that's good. And then the question is, do you love them? Mm-hmm. Because if you truly love that person, mm-hmm. You want to get the gospel to them. That's right. If you truly don't say that you love somebody, that you don't, and you won't give them the gospel, mm-hmm. right? And so sometimes the gospel is not something you just go and say, "Hey, I'm going to share the gospel with you." Sometimes it starts with your actions of love, yeah. of just loving people where they are, mm-hmm. right, and, and spending time, investing time in them, and praying when fasting over their lives, and eventually getting to the gospel, mm-hmm. right? So for me, I think that's important for us is that if each of us will look at our oikos, mm-hmm. look at our family and friends and say, who do I know, who do I love that doesn't know Jesus? And those become our priority. And we mm-hmm. put some other busyness down and focus on those people's lives. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think God's waiting to do some amazing things in our church and through our people. Amen. Yeah, and I like, what you said kind of brings brings back to what we talked about earlier this week about I think a lot of a lot of quote-unquote Christians they take themselves out of even the game because they aren't first being obedient in their life. They they can't even share. They don't even. The the whole the whole possibility of going out to share the gospel has been completely nulled because they're just not being obedient in their everyday life. Mm-hmm. And so you know you so you look at this big group of you know if everyone in this group is Christians and you start pulling out the obedient ones and you start realizing like the gospel's going out but it's not near as like mass as you know you would hope it to be and so because there's so many there's just too many people saying i'm a christian i go to church on sunday and then they're just you know they they just they're they're lazy with their language they're lazy with what they watch they're just mm. you know what i mean and mm-hmm. so uh and then people see that and you know they um mm. and and so anyways but you know talking about like our you know you like like paul when you say like our people you know paul's paul talking to you know you know, directly to, to his Jewish people, 
you know, that kind of, I, I put myself, who are my people? I start with my family, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I've got, I got some family members. I mean, we're all getting older and I got a set of grandparents now that are getting older. And, um, and you know, I've, I've had some, I've had some co- spiritual conversations with my grandfather that God's opened doors to, um, that I'm praying continue to continue to happen. Um, but you know, that's again, I, like, I want to see my friends there. I want to see everybody in heaven, but man, I'd, it's, I really want to see my family there. Mm. Um, and I, I know I have family who do not know Jesus. And, they, and I know I have family who think they're good people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that You just made me think about that. What, so how do we... Because, um, see, Paul's talking to these Jews, and he knew that they thought they were right with God. And I think we've got family and friends that if we asked them that question, are you a Christian... They're going to tell us they are if we word it that way. What do we, what do we do about that? Because uh, I think the reason we're saying we think they're not is what we don't see the fruit. Mm-hmm. We don't see the yeah, obedience. It, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't. I, I hate to be so black and white with it, but I, that's I, I think Scripture is black and white. I don't think, I don't think nothing in Scripture gives us uh, like a little area to kind of color between the lines, um, and so. I, as much as I love people um, and I love my family, like, and I think that's where too, where like when you're when you're when you're you're speaking to your family versus someone you know, like you're gonna you're gonna speak to them differently, you know. And it's so for the people I know and I love that I'm in regular communication with, and they they can come talk with me, like, like just that's fine. Do what you want to do. Just don't say you're a Christian. If you are gonna say you're a Christian, get on, get like get on board. Mm-hmm. Stop stop wasting my time. And, and energy worrying about you and you know because I've got I've, I've heard it like I, I can love Jesus but I can I can still cuss I can say whatever I want and I don't have to be I don't have to go to church to be a Christian no, I don't have to go to church I, I can still love Jesus and do this it was like well Jesus actually says if you love me you'll you'll do what I say mm. um, so no you can't do whatever you want mm. um, and so and but yeah like just either if, if you're gonna say you're a Christian, jump in and 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 play ball with the rest of us um if you're not if you're not ready then just just stop saying you're a christian Mm -hmm. i mean and i hate to say that like again i know people are in different walks of life or whatever i i get that but if you're just going to church on sundays because it's the southern thing to do and i I just i got no time for that Mm. i think too thinking about family and friends even people in the community our, our motivation has to be love Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we love God, we love people, right? Mm-hmm. So if you love God, then you're gonna you're gonna love people, and you want them to hear the gospel, right? Right. So I think our motivation not has when when they say they're a Christian, uh, I just like I'm learning to ask people. So can you like define that for me? What does it mean to be a Christian? Mm-hmm. Because you get 50 different answers when you ask 50 different people, right? Right. So right. people have. That people don't even understand what Christianity is, and right. that they, yet they were born into a Christian home, so they assume that they're a Christian, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Or they go to church, so they're a Christian, or their parents go to, went to church, so they're mm-hmm. a Christian. Granddaddy or, was a preacher. Granddaddy was a preacher. Or they say things like, well, you know, me and Jesus got our own thing going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the old deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You hear that a lot, right? So getting people to define what that means to them to be a Christian is super helpful, because mm-hmm. then you can see a figure out, okay, well, they really don't know what right. a Christian is. Maybe I can share the gospel and explain yeah. what it looks like mm-hmm. in, from Scripture. Yeah. I, I, so something I've heard more and more in my conversations recently, and it seems like it's just been the last couple of years maybe, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, not as much Christians. I, yeah, I'm a Christian. What I'm hearing now is I'm Catholic. Hmm. Hmm. You know, used the same way. You know, it's funny because I used to hear that one about 40 years ago. <laughs> you know, but like I'm, <laughs> and, I'm starting to see and, that with my conversations with people. And, and it was often an excuse to shut up. I don't want to hear the gospel. Sure, sure. Is yeah. how it was. Back then, or they just attended yeah. a mass once a year, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because they did that. Yeah. Well, well, they want to keep a license of sin. Is what they want yeah. to do. Well, yeah. in essential, that is what Paul was dealing with. The Jews were saying, "I'm Jewish." That's what Nicodemus was saying to Jesus. Uh, you know, he didn't have to say it. He said, "I'm a, I'm a Pharisee. I'm a Jew." You know, and uh, what did Jesus say to him? You must mm-hmm. be born again. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, uh, yeah, you were born in the flesh, but you need to be born of the spirit, and that's. Well, that's where the change takes place. You know? mm-hmm. So, um, man, this was some good stuff. <laughs> you led us yeah. well again, Gunner. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what do you mean by that? 
No. Yeah. Good job, both of you. Yep. Well, Pastor Norm, thank you for thank you for leading this this way this this time. It's just refreshing, just something different. Um, so I, we appreciate it. But is there? Um, I mean, before we close, we kind of wrap this up. You know, um, I would I, just the the last thing I just want to say, and if if I can, is you know, chapter nine, ten, eleven. You know, as 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 you said, a lot of people use that as a sovereign grace, sovereign uh, God, sovereign choice is the way my my Bible kind of heads that that chapter. Um, this is nothing to be afraid of. Scripture, you should like, like what you should be afraid of is your sin, and like mm-hmm. Scripture, like I, that's what I'm afraid of. Like I want to be, I'm afraid of like I know God's attention and the way how He looks at sin, and um, but. Don't be afraid of the stuff you don't understand. I That's think right. there are people out there, and I and I and I, I've learned this in ministry. There's people are so uniquely different, mm-hmm. and you can't just assume everyone is the same. Like you, everyone is a is a person by person kind That's of right. situation. And so I know that there are people out there who are just intellectual people. And they want to know, and they have a hard time not understanding something. Right. And then you got folks like. Like, I know me and you, like, I don't care if I don't know it. I really don't. I just know what I'm supposed to be doing and I'll learn it. I'll figure it. We'll figure it out one day. And that stuff doesn't, we don't, we don't wake, we don't, we're not uh, staying up at night worrying that we can't understand the fact that God is sovereign. um, But yet we have, we, we, we can make decisions. Like we can make decisions. So I just want to encourage people, like when you're studying scripture, like we're not going to be a church that we're going to, we're going to dodge things in the Bible. We're not that kind of church, but we're going to meet things head on and don't be afraid of something you don't know. As a matter of fact, it's a great kind of maybe check engine light to to know you might need some discipleship. Mm-hmm. If you're not in a discipleship group or anything like that, then that could be a good indicator to getting plugged in into some mm. discipleship. So, Amen. but but anyways, we will um, wrap up with that. So, would one of y'all please pray for us as we leave? I'll pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you for the time we've had together. Um, thank you for your word. And how it speaks and how it doesn't contradict itself, um, how it's truth, um, inerrant, infallible. And I just pray, Father, as a people, we'd be drawn to it and that you would use it to speak into our lives very deeply. And, Father, as you speak into our lives, I pray we'd be a people that would obey uh, with, with joyful hearts, not out of obligation or um, concern, but out of joy. And that um, I pray that you would move in our lives very deeply. I pray that you use Living Truth Church to be active in our community. I pray your kingdom would be expanded, and I pray the gospel would go, and that you would receive the glory for it. So today we worship you, we praise you, we bless you, and we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.